joining us. So you've seen their faces here on KLBK and even on missing person flyers around town. Yeah, our Leslie Adamy sat down with the mothers of those who have gone missing over the past three years on why they're not giving up hope in the search for answers as to why their loved ones are still gone without a trace. When it happens to you, you, you just don't realize, you know, it, it's so unreal. When Megan Hembry's mother saw her last, she said she was heading to a friend's house, but she never made it there. Thought I might hear from her in a little bit, you know, uh, leaving her messages, and then about midday, I, uh, I checked, you know, hospitals. According to witnesses, however, she was last seen with this man, Michael Todd Ramsey. He was taken in for questioning, but no charges have ever been filed in Megan's case. Ramsey does remain behind bars, though, in Van Zandt County on unrelated charges. He's going to answer for this, and we are going to get justice someday. And as the fourth year since her disappearance nears, Megan's mother recalls what the last few have been like. Vigils and various searches to help bring this daughter home to her parents and a mother back to her son. He's a lot like her and in so many ways. Every time I go see Aiden, he says, leave it open. He wants to see her. This is one of those that it's, it, it kind of stumps everybody. Knowing that I haven't seen her or heard her voice in three years, um, or even just the fact that I don't feel any closer to, to getting answers, to getting her home. 18-year-old Zoe Campos was last seen headed to go pick her mom up from work on November 17, 2013, but never showed up. According to Detective Freeman, the last time anyone heard from her was November 18. Family members began searching city streets and county roads. That's when Zoe's aunt spotted something familiar. I knew somebody was driving. It wasn't her because it was a male. I knew that for a fact. Her aunt chased the car down until it reached the Driftwood apartment complex. But by the time law enforcement arrived, it had already been abandoned. This is no, nowhere near a cold case. Uh, a cold case means you've hit all dead ends. Um, nothing's coming in. I get constant leads every day. Some leads are just hearsay that turn out to be not correct. Uh, but there are leads every day that come in. And as the holiday season quickly approaches, her mother says it's never been the same since Zoe's disappearance. Just not ready to celebrate and, and see all my family with their kids. All their kids and I can't be my when I, you sleep and then you go to get, when you get up, you think, wow, what, it, was that a dream or a nightmare? And then you think, no, this is really happening. Jeffrey Hargrove was only one semester away from finishing up his bachelor's degree at Texas Tech. His parents say he was doing well in school and that he communicated with them frequently. So when they never heard back from him after the Texas Tech versus Texas football game, they knew something was wrong. He was staying at the Overton Hotel but never checked out of his room. His phone, wallet, and key left behind. Hargrove's family flew in from Florida and has been here ever since, searching desperately in a town unfamiliar to them. Spread the word. He's out there somewhere. He could, he could be lost, not knowing maybe where he is. And if every, anybody, just keep, keep looking for him. And as the investigations continue, leads come and go, these three mothers remain persistent in their common goal to bring their loved ones home. Every day is a new day, and... Maybe that day will be the day that you get the answer. Leslie Adamy, KLBK News. And the family of Zoe Campos says they are inviting the community out to a vigil for the third anniversary of her disappearance at Parsons Elementary at 7 p.m. tomorrow. If you have any information regarding any of these three cases, you can always leave a tip with Lubbock Police, and you can do so anonymously at 741-1000. New details.